Hello, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Tamur and this is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. Uh, haven't made a video for some time, so I thought I'll just uh, uh, make one on a topic which a lot of people ask me about. Now, if you're not aware, I do a lot of career coaching for cybersecurity professionals, you know, to help them out in their career and where they want to be in the next three to five years. And one of the biggest requests I usually see whenever I ask people, what do you want to be in your cybersecurity career? They usually say, I want to be the CISO. This is my goal. And that's what I wanted to talk about. First of all, uh, should you become a CISO and then how to become a CISO if the answer is yes. And the reason usually people say, because I mean, honestly, CISO is considered to be the top position, right? And they have the best salaries. And where I am in the UK, this is usually one of the highest paying jobs. Uh, becoming a CISO, you, you become like the top guy in uh, cybersecurity. But at the same time, the CISO is a very, very stressful job. Most CISOs, I know they're pretty much stressed out. They don't have like a good life, work life balance. And they're always like, like nervous about the next uh, security breach, which is going to happen, right? And you can look at this also. It is one of the most stressful jobs in cybersecurity, okay? So I, I just wanted to be, have a balanced approach. I don't want to tell you just be, go ahead and do this and become the CISO and you've uh, achieved success. It really depends on how you define success. And this is something I always try to tell people. Right. If you become the CISO, you are the top guy. You will be the one setting down the strategy. You will be the one making the major decisions. Right. So in app, if that is something you are interested in, then this video is for you. And I which I wanted to talk about how to become a CISO in 2024. What are the key skills you need? And I keep updating this every year whenever I feel that uh, some things have changed. Right. And this is really what I want to focus about. If you are new to this channel, do like and subscribe to this channel. And uh, share this video if you found it useful. So first of all, quick, quick, quick overview. What, what is the CISO? The Chief Information Security Officer, right? This is the executive who heads the cybersecurity unit, right? This is the guy who will set down the cybersecurity strategy, the tone. And, you know, this is where, where the buck uh, stops because you're the one who's setting down the strategy. You're the one talking to the board. What is going on? What is the vision for the next three to five years? The list is like too long to complete. But this is a very very critical position and a very stressful job also. And uh, if you have seen the news of the breaches of the company which gets compromised, the poor CISO is the one who's on the line of fire, right? And, but of course, why do people do it? Because it is a very, if you're interested in cybersecurity and you want to really control how cybersecurity is implemented and you have a vision, this is the job for you, right? Because you're there at the top, you're the one making the decisions. So, uh, and let's talk about, first of all, uh, am I a CISO? So you might be thinking, why is this guy talking to me uh, about being a CISO? So I, I currently I'm a the cloud security consultant at Amazon Web Services in the UK, okay, in London. And I have been in cybersecurity for the past 20 years and I have won a few awards uh, here and there. So I'm not the CISO in AWS, thank you very much. But like I have been the CISO, I've been a CISO for multiple companies in the Middle East, in my home country, right? I have won the award for being the CISO of the year in 2019. So it is, I do have familiarity with this role. I know what is required, what to do. And so I usually have a good understanding of the CISO roles. So I've done it for multiple companies uh, for the past 20 years. Okay. So I do know what I'm talking about. So before we talk about uh, how to become the CISO, first of all, the most important question, should you become the CISO, right? Should you become the CISO? And that's a critical question, which people sometimes do not ask themselves. Okay. You can be exceptionally, like you can be very, very successful in cybersecurity without ever becoming the CISO, right? And th the reason I showed you uh, my experience, because you might be thinking, okay, this guy is just a loser who never became the CISO and that's why he's bitter. But so that's the reason I showed you because I have been in this position and I know. So, but a lot of times people are not realistic about the CISO position, what it requires and what it means. So before we get into how to become a CISO, I want to be very, very clear about what it requires, right? Uh, a lot of people who are newcomers, even experienced professionals, all their dreams is, is about becoming the CISO, right? So let's explore why becoming a CISO should not be your end goal in cybersecurity. First of all, like I said before, it is a very, very stressful job. It is without any doubt. Get ready for a world of stress. The best thing about becoming a CISO is that you're responsible. You are ultimately responsible for cybersecurity. And the worst thing about becoming a CISO is also the same thing you are responsible for cyber security. So when something bad happens, you are in the hot seat. One guy, one person clicking on a malicious link, your company gets compromised. You are the one the CEO will be asking, the board will be asking. 
So be prepared to deal with a lot of angry CISOs and board members when things go wrong. I cannot tell you the number of times I've had to sit and stand in front of an executive or CEO and explain things, right? So if you're like me and you like a peaceful night's sleep and like you don't want to be drinking like 10 cups of coffee at night, <laughs> like the CISO title might not be for you. Just remember this, and this is something, unfortunately, people uh, do not realize, right? The second thing is linked to this, the blame game. Yeah, you know, if you've ever worked in cybersecurity, whenever data breach happens, right? Who is the usual, like uh, the scapegoat where everybody is pointing at you? You can guess, right? Forget the fact that you've probably highlighted a risk many, many times that a DDoS attack might happen or some malware might come back and the CEO will say to you, ah, we don't have the money right now, right? No matter how many times you've highlighted something bad happens, people will be pointing the finger towards you and telling you. So if you're like, uh, I'm like, like me, I'm like a bit of an introverted person, but if you're an extrovert, that's good. If you're confrontational, you can take this. But if you're like me and you're not really confrontational and you like to be easygoing with people, so get, remember this, right? You're, uh, you could become the scapegoat or the sacrificial lamb. People will be pointing towards you and saying, hey man, this is your fault. This happened. Why did this happen? So just be ready for that. It is a, a job that requires a lot of back and forth, confrontational, where you have to be like, you know, uh, butting heads with other people also. Just remember this before you, uh, again, uh, think about this position, right? And the last thing, should you becoming a CISO, the most important thing, a lot of people do not realize becoming a CISO is not the only path. Cybersecurity is a massively, you know, dynamic and evolving field. Don't think of the CISO position as an end goal. So it's like finishing a marathon, right? That you finished it now become the CISO. If you're passionate about cybersecurity, there are so many other things you can do. You can pivot into research. You could become a cyber security consultant like me. I'm much more happier just being a cloud security consultant than I ever was as being a CISO, right? You can start your own company. You can become a freelancer, become a cybersecurity influencer, right? Writing on LinkedIn. And I've, I've made, like, I've written many times about how you can become a freelancer, right? So many, there are many, many possibilities. And you can easily earn as much as a CISO would earn. So just remember this, please. Do not think that this is the only option. But if you have your heart set and you think this is the if way to go, like this is the title I want to be. So then let's talk about what you want, what skills are needed uh, for becoming the CISO. Because, <clears throat> sorry, one thing a lot of people I've seen, they make a mistake. They think I'll get the certification. I think there's one from EC Council, certified CISO or something. There is no certification which makes you a CISO, I'm sorry to say. I don't know where this thing has come. You need hard experience and you need certain skills. And a lot of people have unrealistic expectations. They think the CISO position is a technical job. Uh, no, the, mostly the, the majority of the tools you might be using is uh, Microsoft PowerPoint and Excel. The CISO is a strategic role. You need to be able to talk to the C-suite. You need to know about uh, risk management, ego management, you know, boardroom politics, budget restrictions. So please, if you are like uh, interested in staying technical, don't think about becoming a CISO. But when you talk about the skills, the first thing you need to know is risk management. Very, very important. You do not have unlimited time and unlimited budget. So that's why you need to focus on what is the most important. You need to understand what threats are there, right? And make a strategy based on that. You cannot just be technical. You need to know how to properly do risk management. Okay, a, a skill which is very, very critical, right? And be able to present this to management. And a lot of people make this mistake. They do not know about risk management, how to highlight risk. And they are all always in firefighting mode, jumping from here to there, right? Trying to put out fires, having major reactions. Why? Because they never knew about risk management, properly uh, risk management, and uh, making a strategy based on that, right? And you remember, you do not have unlimited time. You do not have unlimited budget. You do not have unlimited resources. So becoming a CISO needs you to understand about risk management. Okay. That is the first skill I would recommend you focus on. The second one is communication. Okay. You need to know how to communicate. If you're standing in front of the CEO or the board talking in technical buzzwords like zero trust and web application firewall, SQL injection will put them to sleep. You need to understand, you need to be able to highlight these risks in the language the business will understand. As a CISO, you need great communication and presentation skills so you can interact with staff and board members in a proper way. And this is how you get the trust of other departments, okay? You need to be able to explain security uh, issues and concerns in an easy to understand way, like in a non-threatening manner to people. Shouting like, every time shouting like there's a fire, 
it will simply make people dismiss you because they'll say this guy is always in like a firefighting mode right you need to have good very good communication skills work on this there are so many workshops and things you can do to improve your presentation and working skills the second one is leadership and what do i mean by leadership right uh, very very important thing to understand when i say leadership i mean that things like strategy things like team building uh, motivation right if you're not comfortable leading teams this is not the job for you okay you might not be able to do this job and you'll have lots of problems later on a good ceo he has very good supervision skills because you you will have be managing teams okay you will be managing teams from multiple locations when i was a ceo i used to look after jordan egypt south africa dubai most of like multiple countries and you will have clashes a bit happening between people people fighting with each other you know conflict management critical thinking time management uh, uh like knowing how to solve problems with, which happen between people all these things are required okay if you're thinking it's just a technical job i'm going to be sitting alone and managing stuff uh, this is not the again the, the, you will have serious problems later on in your ceo career and lastly uh, budgeting to manage uh, i hate to tell you this budgeting it will play a major major part because you will be uh, you might be handling a multi million dollar budgeting right and you need to think about how to manage opex capex what are the things where you can cut costs right ideal world you will have a multi billion dollar budget uh, but this is not the real world especially nowadays where budgets are being slashed and you need to need to know budgeting how to know way to cut cost way to focus on if you do not know budgeting please learn this because this will form a major major part of your uh, ceo responsibilities so i hope you got it things like risk management communication team building leadership budgeting right along with your cyber security knowledge if you don't have these skills work on this and then you will uh, really understand uh, these are the skills you need to focus on to become an effective ceo so okay let's assume you have cyber security knowledge and you have these skills also you feel or you feel you will be able to learn them quickly right so then let's move on how to become a ceo right okay i have this and what are the ways i can get to the ceo position so there are technically there are two ways of doing this and one is like uh, get promoted so you are already in cyber security work hard in your current job progress in your role until you reach the ceo level because of your competence and accomplishments to management you can show these skills until you reach that level right a lot of people do this and they are able to accomplish it but sometimes this can be quite hard to do or it takes a long long time right and if you're working in a big company this can become where there are like maybe hundreds of people in cyber security it becomes difficult to stand out right and it becomes frustrating also another way of doing it is to job switch but job switch smartly right if you are like an infosec manager or infosec officer you can take a shortcut you can find a smaller size company where they happily where they will happily give you the ceo title right and because in your current company maybe there is no way to progress to ceo in your current positions you can you can move to a smaller company who is willing to give you that ceo title and that responsibility right because they might be not be able to hire a person with that salary but you can pivot to a ceo title and they are willing to give you that opportunity get some experience there get that title within 18 months two years move to a bigger company uh, using your ceo title so this is a very uh, easy way of doing this okay uh, what happens is a lot of times people are focusing on the big companies fortune 500 is and they are not willing to give you the chance because you've never been a ceo so do like this move to a smaller company they are willing to give you that ceo title stay there for 18 to months two years get that some experience get that position and then you can easily pivot to a higher level uh, ceo role within cyber security so these are all the advice i wanted to give about ceo and what you can do i hope this was useful to you if you are interested in becoming a ceo i try to prevent like give you a good unbiased opinion right which can help you see what what is required to become a ceo and should you become a ceo or not so i hope this was useful to you please do like and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you